Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a different makeup tutorial. I'm doing a buy nothing makeup look. So yesterday I spent a couple of hours going through my makeup collection and decluttering. The point of it for me was to get rid of any old expired products and also to get rid of products that I don't really use anymore that are just kind of taking up space. And I was quickly very, very overwhelmed by how many makeup products I have in my collection. But it was just crazy. The amount of bottles I had, the amount of products, the amount of powders and foundations and setting sprays and bronzers and blushes and highlighters and eyeshadow palettes. I have so much stuff. I have so much skincare. I have so many little samples, like so many things in my collection that are just sitting there not getting used. By no means do I have the most extensive makeup collection on YouTube, actually far from it. My makeup collection doesn't have any free PR in it. So it's all things that I've purchased myself. And I am by no means like makeup shaming or glam shaming or anything like that. I work very, very hard for the money that I earn and I can spend it on whatever I want. But I just thought it was crazy the way that my makeup collection has exploded since I started watching YouTube. I know that a couple of people have requested that I do the YouTube made me buy it video, but it's just like YouTube made me buy my entire makeup collection because that's how I got into makeup and that's how I started like learning how to do techniques and discovering new products. Basically everything in my makeup collection is because of YouTube. All of my makeup could fit into one makeup bag. It was just like a little makeup pouch. It had all my makeup in it. And since I started watching YouTube, my collection has exploded. And since I started my own YouTube YouTube channel, my collection has probably exploded in triplicate from that because I'm always trying to keep up with the latest makeup releases. I always want to have new products to talk about on my channel. I always want to review things for you guys and let you guys know what I think. And it can get kind of crazy trying to keep up with the latest makeup releases. There are so many new products getting launched every single day from every single brand. It is impossible to keep up and it is really, really hard on the wallet to keep up. So as I was going through my makeup collection and decluttering, I found so many great products that I used to absolutely love that I never use anymore. And I wanted to put all of those things together and create a makeup look for you guys today. This video was inspired by Lisa Eldridge's Buy Nothing makeup tutorial. If you guys haven't seen that or you haven't checked out her channel, I'll link it down below. She's a really incredible YouTuber, super duper talented when it comes to actual makeup artistry. I really, really love her. You guys should check her out. So all the makeup products that you guys are gonna see me use today are products that have been sitting in my makeup collection gathering dust because I have either been reaching for the latest and greatest or buying new products and adding them to my collection and forgetting about my old ones. As I said before, it's perfectly fine to have a big makeup collection and have a lot of things to choose from. But just for me, I really wanna make sure that I'm not wasting money and I wanna make sure that if I buy a product and I like it, that I actually end up using it up. So I'm gonna really try to incorporate more of those products into my makeup routine so that I'm not always just, you know, continually buying Maybelline Fit Me foundation and the rest of the foundations I have in my collection are just sitting there gathering dust when they're perfectly good foundations that I could be using. So let's go ahead and get into the video. If you guys wanna see how I achieved this buy nothing makeup look, keep watching. All right, so to get started with today's look, I'm first gonna go in with this Kat Von D Locket Hydrating Primer. I found this on the bottom shelf of my makeup collection and I remember buying it and remember being really excited about it. I used it for probably about two weeks and I liked the results and then I just haven't used it since. So I pulled this out to try today and I really like this product. It's soft, it's hydrating. It feels good on my skin. Feels like it's giving me like a smooth base to apply my makeup. It has a nice texture. It doesn't have an overly offensive smell. So I'm buying all kinds of new primers when I have a perfectly good one sitting at home. All right, so now moving on to foundation and this one is particularly shameful. I bought this Bare Minerals Bare Pro foundation when I did my $1,000 Sephora haul when I was buying products during the fall VIB Rouge sale. And again, like the primer, I found this on the bottom shelf of my makeup collection. I guess I was so excited about the Fenty foundation that I bought at the same time that this one sort of got ignored, but this one just seems incredibly pristine and I can't even remember having used it, which is insane because this is like a $50 foundation, like it's not cheap. So I think that I've used it because I can see by the pump that like some has been squirted out already, but like I honestly can't even remember if I tried this foundation on my face, if I liked it, I have no idea. So today's also like a first impressions for this. And again, like that's just awful because I bought this foundation and I was so excited to use it and then it just sat there, like it's terrible. All right, so I'm just gonna apply that to my face. It seems to be going on pretty smooth. Nice coverage for the first layer anyways. I'm probably gonna have to go in again because I do see still a little bit of redness on my cheek. 
so it seems to be laying down on my face really nicely. I, I do have a, a lot of texture right now and I'm trying different skincare products to try to combat that, but this doesn't seem to be like really emphasizing the texture in a huge way. Um, like I said, it's laying down nicely on the skin. It's nice and smooth. It doesn't seem to be too cakey or anything like that. There's good coverage. Like, so there you go. There's like a full bottle of a really nice high end good foundation just sitting collecting dust in my makeup collection so ugh, like i just i've really learned something from this and i want to make an effort to try and use up products and switch things out of my makeup collection and maybe not buy as much and maybe try to do different makeup looks with the makeup that i already have because this is just crazy so now i'm going to go in with setting powder and i found this laura mercier translucent setting powder in my collection i used to use this every single day but it was buried underneath a whole bunch of other face products that i have so i'm just going to take my damp beauty sponge and just set the under eye area. I'm not really saying that you have to, you know, use up one thing before you buy another thing. It's great to have a lot of products in your makeup collection. And again, I'm not, you know, I'm not shaming about that, about people who have large makeup collections, because I like to try a lot of different products too. But it's just such a shame when like such great products are just sitting there gathering dust and we're so obsessed with the latest and greatest. All right, so now to set the rest of my face, I'm gonna go in with this Maybelline Fit Me Set and Smooth Powder. Mine is in the shade 115 Ivory. You know, and I'm remembering how much I used to love this. Like I already hit pan on this particular one and I went through a whole bunch of them. And now, you know, I use the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk and the Charlotte Tilbury powders. And those two are really expensive, you know? And I love this powder, like, it feels really nice on my skin and it's the perfect shade for me. And you know, I love the Maybelline Fit Me line and it's so much less expensive and it's more accessible. Like I don't have to actually go to England to get it. So I do love those powders and I will always use them and I will always love them. But you know, it's not necessary for me to run out and go catch a flight to the UK when I run out of the Charlotte Tilbury powder because I have a perfectly good one right here. All right, so I'm now going in with bronzer and you guys know how much I love my Physicians Formula Butter bronzer and my Charlotte Tilbury bronzer and my Hoola bronzer. But before I bought any of those, I used to wear this particular bronzer every single day. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer and this is in the shade Luminous Bronze Light. And I remember like, I think this was one of the very first high-end bronzers that I purchased and that was because I was just getting into YouTube and I was watching a lot of Jaclyn Hill videos and I think she mentioned it in two or three of her videos and you know, I just decided to try it and I fell in love with it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that to the temples. And underneath the chin. And again, like I'm remembering why I like this bronzer. It's a great bronzer. I need to use it more often. All right, so I'm now moving on to blush. I'm going to be using the Morphe Brushes 9B Blush Palette. And I bought this blush palette. It was one of the very, very first blush palettes or blushes that I owned besides my MAC Pincho Peach that I had been using like forever, that was the only blush I ever used. I had one blush, like I owned one blush and that's all I used. And this was kind of the first other blush that I bought and I liked that it had nine shades in it. Now, there are some shades in here that I don't think that I would ever wear just because I feel like I'm too pale and this red one up here just reminds me of like clowns, but there are a lot of really beautiful like neutral blushes in here, especially the ones like these four right here. These blushes are very, very pigmented. So if you bought this 9B blush palette, which I think is like incredibly affordable on morphebrushes.com, like you wouldn't really need any other blushes, but yet somehow I have like 12 or 14 other blushes. Again, more blush than I'll ever be able to put on my face in my entire life. It's giving me a really nice, beautiful finish. And I'm, I wanna check in on this foundation too because a lot of times when I put powder products over a foundation, it can start to like break up or move around. But this foundation is actually sitting pretty nicely on my skin still. And everything's blending really nicely over it. All right, so I'm gonna do my brows off of camera really quickly. There wasn't really any brow products in my collection that have been sitting there for a really long time. I just recently picked up another one of my Anastasia Brow Wiz, um, but I also had this L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. I've been using those two pretty interchangeably, and I don't really have any other brow pencils in my makeup collection right now as it stands, so we're okay on that front. I'm just gonna go and put these on off of camera really quickly, and I'll be right back. Okay, so brows are on, and now it's time to move on to the eyes. I'm just gonna zoom you guys in really quick. Okay, so long before the days of the Smashbox 24 hour photo finish eye primer, I used to use this particular eye primer all the time and this is the Urban Decay Primer Potion. This is one of the tinted ones. This is in the shade Sin. 
And I found this in my makeup collection. It's almost full and I haven't used it. And I'm not sure why, because I really used to love it. And I am pretty loyal to my Smashbox one now just because it works so well for me, but there's no reason why I can't use this one up as well. And another product that I used to use to prime my lids all the time that I found is this one. And this is the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. I used to use this every single day to prime my lids, to cancel out any redness. And you know, it's still a really perfectly good product. And so, you know, there's no reason why I can't use it up. All right, so now it's time to go in with eyeshadow. And guys, this is another really embarrassing one. So I was going through my eyeshadow palettes and I have so many of them and I can't stop buying them and I'll just never be able to use all of these eyeshadow palettes in my entire life. But I remember this one, the Kylie Cosmetics Burgundy Palette. This is one of those palettes that I absolutely had to have, you know, when it came out. It was so beautiful and warm toned and gorgeous. Like, take a look at these shades. You know, and I was just like, oh my God, I need that. I have to have it. And of course, you know, buying from United States website and the shipping and taxes and duties in exchange, it was really expensive to, for this palette to get to me. You know, I honestly think I used it twice, if that. It's just like such a testament to like how much we don't really need things because I remember when I saw this palette, I was like, I need that. And it turns out I don't really because I haven't barely used it. So, but it is a very beautiful palette and I want to go in and create a look with it today. So the first thing I wanna do is just go in with some shadow as a base to blend out with. And so I'm gonna go in with this color right here. That is Naked. And it has a little bit of a shimmer to it, but not too much. And I'm just gonna sort of take that all over the lid. Okay, so next as a crease color, I'm going to go in with this shade right here that is called Beach. And it is just a beautiful warm brown transition color, very pigmented, there's lots coming up onto the brush. So I'm just gonna take that right in the crease right there. All right, so now to warm up the crease a little bit, I'm gonna go in with this color right here. This is called Penny. And I kinda want it to peek through up top, so I'm just gonna like kinda take this just over top of the color that we just laid down. Okay, so now to add a little bit more dimension and color to the crease, I'm actually gonna mix these two colors right here. This one is called Burgundy and this one is called Brick. And I'm gonna mix those two colors together. Burgundy is actually a very, very pigmented red color and I don't wanna have too much pinkiness to the tone of this eye look. Um, so that's why I'm gonna mix it with its sort of darker counterpart. And I'm keeping that a little bit lower as well because I do want that sort of orangey brown um, color at the top to kind of shine through. Okay, so now to darken up the outer corner, I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. This is called Almond. And I'm gonna take that on a more precise, smaller, fluffy brush and just sort of pat that onto the outer corner. As I said in one of my previous videos, the best thing you can do with darker shadows is to kind of place the pigment where you want it first, like just sort of pat it onto your eyelid like this, and then you can go ahead and blend it out. But if you try to just like sweep it onto your lids first, um, the pigment will get everywhere and it's really hard to clean when it's like a darker one, you know? So, all right, so now moving on to the lid and I was kind of looking at this palette and I'm like, oh, which shimmer do I want to use for the lid with this look? Like basically all three of them, would, I think, look good. Um, I'm really drawn to this one and this one and those two are called LA and Dubai. Um, so I think I'm actually gonna go in with both of them. <laughs> so I'm first gonna take Dubai on my finger. Look at that. That is so pretty. And I'm just going to tap that on to the lid just to kind of darken it up a little bit. This would probably be better if I used a little bit of Fix Plus with this, if especially if this was the only lid shade that I was gonna go in with. I would probably put this on a flat shader brush and put some Fix Plus on it just because um, it is kind of powdery and so it's not like giving me the color payoff and the like shiny payoff that I want from a shimmer shadow, but I'm going on with one over top. So, um, patting on with my finger for now is fine. All right. So now for the center of the lid, I'm going to go into this kind of coppery shade right here. That's called LA and I'm just putting the pigment on a flat shader brush like that. And I'm going to put some fix plus on it just to kind of make it stick a little bit better where I want it because I only want it in the center of my lid. Oh, that is so pretty. Oh, that color is just absolutely gorgeous. I love that. All right, let's blend. All right, so now moving to the lower lash line, I'm just gonna take that dark brown color almond again, just on a angled brush 
and just sweep that under. I don't know if you guys can see, but I have like a little scratch right here. <laughs> That's because when I was laying down in bed, my cat decided to use my face as a trampoline. Okay, and to blend out that color, I'm actually gonna take a combination of these three shades, just so that we can get kind of all of the colors that we used on the upper lid down on the lower lash line. Now, when I was putting my makeup together for this video, I remembered about this Kylie palette that it doesn't really have any good highlight shades in here. This one, Naked, is sort of, um, you know, it has a little bit of a shimmer to it, but it doesn't show up as much as I would like my highlight shades to show up. So I actually grabbed a different product to highlight my brow and inner corner with. And that is this Becca highlighter. This is in the shade Moonstone. So this is another highlighter that doesn't really get a lot of love from me anymore, but it's really, really good for highlighting the brow bone and inner corner. What I like about using really nice pigmented highlighters as brow bone highlights is that you can also sort of control the color and how far it's gone up. So if you've gone a little bit too high with your crease colors, you can actually use this to blend over it and sort of tame the look down a little bit. Okay, and just now going into the inner corner as well. And I really think that the sort of creamy vanilla yellow undertone of this highlighter really complements the colors in this palette. All right, so I'm gonna go finish the eyes off of camera really quick, but I just wanted to show you guys what I'm gonna be using. So I also have a lot of like travel size and sample size products in my makeup collection, stuff that I either get with Sephora points or if I buy little kits or something like that, and I just never really get around to using them and they're good products. So like I have this Stila Huge Lashes Mascara here and Ico London Eyeliner that's really pigmented. I think I got this in an Ipsy bag and I think I bought like a little Stila um, sampler set of like a liquid lipstick, the Stila eyeliner, the lashes, and some glitter. And like these are really great products that I'm just like, that are just sitting there not being used. And so if I run out of a better than sex mascara, I don't have to go out and buy another one immediately. I have some products in my collection that I can use up. So anyways, I'm just gonna go and finish off my eyes off of camera and I'll be right back. All right guys, so this is the finished eye look. I just added a pair of the Kiss Lashes in the style 03. I'm actually going to my husband's parents' house for dinner after this. So no need to put on a pair of Caterpillar lashes. Um, and yeah, like I'm really, really happy with the way that this eye look turned out and it's all using products that I haven't really touched in a while. So this just goes to show that you can create really beautiful looks with makeup that's already existing in your collection. You don't need to go out and buy the latest and greatest thing just to get a pretty look. All right, you guys, so now moving on to highlight and I am so excited to be using this product in this video today because I used to absolutely love this product for highlight. This is the MAC Iridescent Loose Powder. This is in the shade Silver Dusk. And again, I used to use this product as a highlight all the time and I just found it buried under a bunch of stuff in my makeup collection and I just absolutely love this powder. I'm gonna swatch it for you really quick so that you can see what it looks like on my hand. Like, look at that, holy man. So it is just a gorgeous silvery highlighter and it has so many little reflections in it of like different colors. It's just so pretty and I love it so much. So I'm gonna use this on my face today. So I'm actually gonna use a technique that I have been seeing some beauty gurus do on YouTube and that is to apply your highlight with a damp beauty sponge. So I'm just gonna go in to the highlight. Oh, like look at that. All right, so on the other side of my face, I'm going to use my Morphe M501 brush just to see if I like using the beauty blender method or if I like the brush method better. Now, this is a loose pigment, so um, you have to be really careful about how you apply it. I have to say, I actually like the Beauty Blender side more because I feel like it's a little bit more like pressed into my skin, whereas this side, I feel like the highlighter is just sitting on top of my skin and therefore it's emphasizing my texture a little bit. So I'm just gonna press. I just feel like this helps it blend in a little bit more. I really like this technique actually. And because I'm just going bananas over this highlighter, I'm gonna pop a little bit of it into my inner corner over top of that moonstone just because I'm feeling super duper extra. All right, so now moving on to lips, and this is another area where I'm just shameful in the amount of lip products that I have that I don't use. I have like two or three liquid lipsticks that I use and a ton of lip glosses that I use, and then everything else just sits in my makeup collection and doesn't get used because I am too scared to be adventurous and try different lip colors. 
But there are three different lip colors that I found in my collection that I want to try today with this look. Um, I knew that I was going to be using the Kylie Burgundy palette, so I wanted to stay in the Berry family. So the first one is a Marc Jacobs lipstick. This is in the shade Magenta La Marc. Another one is a Milani lipstick. This is in the shade Plum Rose. And then I also found this M Milani lip gloss, and this is in the shade Luminoso. This is the same shade as that blush color that I absolutely love. It's a staple, it's a beauty guru favorite, and it's the same shade as the blush, just in a lip gloss format. So. I'm gonna just swatch these really quickly on my hands just to see which one is gonna work the best. So that's the Marc Jacobs one. It's a little dark. So that's the Milani one right there. It's a little bit lighter, so that one might work. Let me just swatch the gloss and see what it looks like by itself. So it's a really, really pretty pink color. Um, I think I'm gonna try a little bit of the Milani lipstick and then a little bit of the gloss over it and see how I like that. But you guys know like I'm so, scared to wear lipstick. I don't know why. I just, I hate drawing attention to my mouth. It's like, I'd much rather highlight my eyes, which I think are a better feature on my face. So, but let's try this out. See, like, I don't know. I feel like it's a pretty color, but I just don't feel comfortable right now. And I don't feel like I could like leave the house and feel super confident in myself wearing this lip. I don't know, maybe it's because the eyes are a little bit more muted and this is like a really bright color. Um, but yeah, this is getting wiped off. All right, so let's go ahead and try the gloss. How friggin' predictable is that? That I would just do a gloss with this look. Ooh. See, that is pretty. I really like that and I really like that it has a little bit of that like shimmery gold reflect in it so it adds a little bit of depth and dimension to the lips. And yeah, I don't know you guys, if anybody out there has any suggestions for what lip they would put with this eye look, I would be more than happy to hear them because pairing eyes with lips is something that I still totally struggle with when it comes to makeup and I also just like don't feel super comfortable with like bright lip colors unless it's like bright red or a deep red. I don't really feel comfortable with any other colors like in the berry or pink or like sort of muted brown like nude families so if you guys know what lip color you would put with this eye look please leave it in the comments down below and I will take all of your suggestions and I will experiment more and try to get more comfortable with different lip colors in 2018. All right, so now to finish off this look, it's time for setting spray. And again, this is absolutely shameful that this product has just been sitting in my makeup collection, not getting used. This is the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. And this is an incredible product. And I have been trying so many different setting sprays lately that this one has just been sort of relegated to the bottom drawer of my makeup collection once again. Now, the one thing I will say about the setting spray is that it tends to break up um, products like mascara and eyeliner and that sort of thing, and even eyelash glue. So I tend to focus this mist just onto like the areas of my face that need a little bit more dewiness and setting the makeup down. But I really try to avoid my eyes when I'm using this or sometimes like, I'll put a palette over my face. So just be careful when you're using this as a setting mist. All right, you guys, that completes this look. I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanna reiterate that sometimes it's okay to not get swept up in the latest product launches, and it's okay to use products from your existing makeup collection. You can create beautiful looks with the makeup that you have right there at home. You don't need to go out and spend, spend, spend on all of the latest product releases. Go through your makeup collection, commit yourself to a buy nothing, and if you're going to create a buy nothing look just make sure that you link it down below so that I can see and as always guys if you liked this video please subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment down below letting me know the kind of videos you want to see me do in the future and if you didn't like this video keep that shit to yourself thank you guys so so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye